Today we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about something called number methods and we're going to talk about something called math objects. So basically what we're going to do today is we're going to have a number episode. We're going to talk about what we can do with numbers when it comes to JavaScript. So the first thing we're going to talk about is number methods. And this is very much the same as one of the previous episodes we did where we talked about string methods. So the basic idea here is that we have some kind of value, which is a primitive value, and we're able to perform methods on it, even though it's not an object. So like we have over here, where I have variable x, that's equal to some kind of random number, like 9.656, we're able to perform some kind of method on it, even though it's not an object. So because we talked about string methods before, I'm not going to go too much into details about number methods, but if you guys are interested and you want to see more types of methods using this number method, I'm going to go ahead and provide a link in the description where you guys can find more of them. So to give you guys at least two examples here, if I were to take this variable x, which is 9.656, and perform a method called toFixed, like the one I have here, I can actually go ahead and copy what we have here and just output it inside the browser so you guys can see it. It basically goes in and says, how many decimal points do you want behind your number? Now, right now, I did actually write zero, which means that I want zero decimal points behind x, which right now is 9.656. So with zero decimal points, it's going to round it up from 656 till 10. So if we were to output this inside the browser, you guys will see it says 10. So always remember that once you use to fixed, it's going to round it up to the nearest highest number or the nearest lowest number. Had it been 0.4 something, it would have been 9. So what we can do here if we want to is let's say I have a shopping cart inside a website and I want to show in dollars how much the person needs to you know, pay in order to buy a product. What I can do is I want to say, well, we don't want some kind of long decimal points. So I want to have two decimal points behind it so they can see how many uh, dollars they need to pay in order to buy this product. So I can actually go back, refresh, and as you guys can see, because I wrote two instead of zero, we now get 9.66. So the next one we have is one called value of, which basically just goes in and calculates the value of whatever we have inside the parentheses behind it. So right now, we'd say 100 plus 23, we're going to get the value of this, which is going to be equal to 123. So we we're to just go ahead and really quickly just paste this down here and save it, refresh the browser, you guys can see we get 123. So there's a bunch of different number methods we can use when it comes to JavaScript. Now, when it comes to math objects, it's a slightly different because math objects is when we want to do some more complicated stuff using math. So let's go ahead and delete what we have down here inside the output and instead use the first example here called math random. Now what this one does is that it goes into the object called math that has a bunch of built-in functions and properties. It goes ahead and takes these numbers or at least takes this object and spits out a random number. So if I were to paste this in here, you guys will see that we get a random number that's between zero and one. So right now I'm getting zero point something, 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 which is very good if you want to do something inside your website that requires you to get a random number each time you refresh the browser. Now, another type of method we have inside this math object is where we can round up numbers, kind of similar to what we did up here. Because if I were to take some kind of number, let's actually go ahead and just copy the method here, paste it down here. Let's say we have 9.6 and I want to round up this number, it's going to round it up till 10. So if we were to refresh, you guys can see we now get 10. So we can do a bunch of stuff using this math object. Now, a couple more advanced examples would be, let's say I have a number like 4.4 and I want to round it up, even though it's lower than five, at least the decimal point is lower than five, which in typical cases would actually mean we need to round down instead. Let's say I want to force it to round it up instead. I can actually go ahead and use math ceiling or seal, which goes ahead and takes this number and even though the number might be 4.1, it's still gonna round it up to five. So if we were to refresh the browser, you guys can see we get five. If I were to take math floor, it would actually go ahead and round it down instead. And let's say we have 4.9. I can actually go ahead and round it down. So you might be asking, what does math differ from using methods up here that we used before? Well, when it comes to this math object, we can do more advanced stuff like what I just showed you guys, 
or we can do something like the power of or the square root of a certain number, or we can even get out the value of pi if we wanted to. So if we were to take pi down here, spit it out, you guys can see we get the pi number, at least for a certain amount of decimal points. We can also get other values, and this is actually what we call a property because the pi down here, as you guys may notice, did not have any parentheses behind it. And that's because it's a property inside the math object, which is already a fixed number. So we have a bunch of these properties and methods that we can use inside this math object in order to do more complicated stuff using math. So if you guys get to a point where you can actually find any number methods that will actually do what you want it to, I haven't actually personally used these in a lot of cases, but if you need to do something advanced like this, then you can go ahead and look into math objects because this will actually have some more complicated stuff you guys may need to use at some point if you want to use this sort of math. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys next time.